Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to use Affinity Designer version 2 on the iPad to create blurred edges around images. I'll show you three methods, all quite simple and available from the tools around the edge of your um, Affinity Designer application. So let's get right to it. They're quite simple. And the whole process is quite so, short. Open a new document. And on this document, I don't want margins. And I don't want bleed. In general, I want a transparent background. And it's landscape. So you can see where I'm pressing the screen. And there's our document being created. I'll pinch that down. Move it over there where I can see it easily. And in there, I'm going to place an image. Now, this image is in the download area of the website. And it's that one there, Pulp Fiction. Do we want it full size? No, probably not. I'll drag it in a bit so you can clearly see the edges when I make the changes to it. And you can see that it's quite a bit over the side. And that's in the way there. Now, what we have here is the image on its own layer. Now, what I want to do is put a rectangular layer over the top of that. So we select rectangle. Make sure the rectangle is white. I think I've got it grey at the moment. There we go. And... Drag out the rectangle. I've got snapping on up there. So it snaps to the edges of the image beneath it. Now that we've got that in place, let's select the fill tool. We don't want solid, we want elliptical. And we have that there. Now you can see it's smudged in the center and darker at the edges. Is that really what we want? Let's have a look and see what happens when we reduce the color. The opacity doesn't change much there, you see. Let's make that white. Now to get that back, just tap elliptical. There it goes. Put that one there, that one there, and change the outside edge to white. Reduce the opacity slightly, but you can see the smudges in the center. What we want to do is reverse that, and that's this one here. You can see the little reverse arrow there. Tap that, tap that. It's like a switch. Now, it's still quite smudged underneath, but we can grab that center bar there and drag that out to the edge. Now, if I take the color, and reduce the opacity, you can see that we've got a nice vignette around the image now. That's fairly straightforward, that one, and that's using the fill tool. Let's just get rid of that. Select the move tool so nothing on the thing is selected. Now you could adjust that even more. We go back there, you can see that the little bar is now even further to the right. Select the color tool, select the opacity, and the opacity is down to 0% now. And it's still quite smudged around the edges and looking very nice. Now, of course, you can change that vignette to anything you like, but those crossbars is locked on the image on the right hand side and the top side by that one there, the aspect lock. That locks the aspect. Now if you want to move those bars and change them you have to unlock the aspect. But we're not going to do that at the moment. Let's just go back to the open tool and there it is. Very nice. You can export that or do what you like with it. Now the next tool that we're going to use is the transparency tool, which is that funny wine glass just below the fill tool. So let's go back here and select that one 
and we'll just delete that. There you go. All that hard work is now gone. Now we're going to select the fill tool below there. But what we want to do is put another white rectangle over that. Ah, and why have we got that there? Because it's left over from the most recent one that we did, which is a bit of a pain. Let's go right out. Let's delete that. That's easy. Close without saving. A new document. Same as before. No margins. General. Transparent background. Okay. Now we've got our transparent background back. Let's place our image. Once again from Recents, Pulp Fiction. And there she is. Nicely centred and not so big. Okay, now we've got transparent background. Let's see what happens now. I'll go back here for a start. Select the Move tool, select Rectangle. Just tap it there to get rid of those lines or we'll move our image and put in our rectangle. Make sure it's white. Now select the transparency tool. Up the top select elliptical and you can see it's elliptical there now. But it's smudged in the center again, so we've got to reverse that aspect. And it's already quite a nice ellipsis. We just bring that across and that's very clear in the center now. That's probably where I want it. Quite a nice wide vignette. Just tap there so you can see it. Clears all that stuff. If you want to make some changes to it, just tap the elliptical again. We're on there. There we go. That's all there is to that one. There's our mask. There's our image before and after. Too easy. There you go. Now, the move tool is there. Let's clear that. We don't want the same problem as we had before. So let's go to new. New document, it's on, already on A4. Get rid of the margins, we don't want those in there. General, transparency, and OK. We're getting good at this, aren't we? Now, place our image again. Place it from Files, Recents, Pulp Fiction, and there we go. Centered image. Now this last option is really quite different. We select the effects menu. We're going to apply a Gaussian blur. Nope, that didn't work, did it? Because I just remembered we don't want a Gaussian blur. What we want is a rectangle again. Make sure the rectangle is white. For the rectangle, select Gaussian blur. And select the radius. Now we move that radius to about there. So we've got, you can see I'm using the pen to bring that radius in or out. I want it about there, I think. 
Now we've got that there, we go back to there, we go back to the tools on layers and rasterize to mask, which is down here. Oops. Rasterize to mask. And there you now have a Gaussian blur applied and the reverse, the center is clear and around the edges there, around the edges, oh, I'm moving that background. It's very sensitive, but you can see the transparency through there. So if you had something else beneath that, other than the image, you would see it through there. That's the third method. It's a bit more fiddly and it's um, a different method. But there's your three methods. So, I hope you enjoy those. I hope you get some value out of them and experiment with them and can use them. So, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.